The fact that it bothers you, Kyle, actually puts you in the majority. Darby cast Wild Card Friday. Kyle and I were obviously just talking about a guy's name, Gus. What is that about, right? As a parent, you see a baby, your baby, for the first time, and you're like, Gus, it is. What's wrong with these people? A lot is the answer to that question. Can you imagine premeditatively, prenatally, before birth, having a serious brainstorming session with your spouse about what to name your child? You know it's a boy. You know he's on the way. You know this is a pretty crazy world to bring a child into, but you got to do it anyway because that's life. You don't get to make the rules about what's going on in the world, okay? But you do get to choose your child's name. And the people who arrive on Gus, really inappropriate. I just have this sense that people who name their children Gus are the kind of people who watch one of the Saw movies and then just go straight to bed. Bone chilling is the hyphenated word to describe everything about them. You know it. This just kind of intuitively makes sense. Occasionally on the Darby cast, we get into a lot of issues, both big and small, but this is actually huge. Thank heavens that the name Gus doesn't come up very often. Since the year 1880, as long as we've been keeping records of things like this, Thankfully, there have only been just over 15,500 individuals named Gus. It pretty much stopped in 1975 when everybody came to their senses and said, what are we doing? What are we doing to these kids? Let's zoom out from the parents, right? These people who could just easily take a nap in a graveyard. That's where they feel comfortable. Such creeps. But let's look at the life story of a guy named Gus. Functionally, all Gus's are orphans because their parents are too busy doing um, satanic blood rituals to really pay attention to them. Let me walk you through the world of Gus. You're born and everybody hates you. Your own parents, they don't want you. All they want to do is skin teenagers in the woods. So they take you to a local orphanage and you get treated like garbage. Now let's take a quick time out. If you're new to the show, you're probably asking yourself a lot of questions. And I'm going to need you to suspend the Inquisition and just enjoy yourself, okay? Let me just ask you a bit of a favor, but let me pose it as a sneaky question. Here goes. Would listening to this podcast and having an amazing time be a terrible idea? Checkmate, new listeners. Welcome aboard. But let's get back to Gus at the orphanage, who's really struggling to keep himself above water, right? All the other kids at the orphanage are learning how to play the drums and the ukulele. Standard curriculum at most orphanages. But nobody passes Gus a uke. You know, it was Bill Shakespeare who said, What's in a name? A rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. But Bill Shakespeare obviously never met anyone named Gus. He would have ripped that line out of Romeo and Juliet, lickety split. But let's continue on the life script of Gus. As a child, he's constantly confused. Asking himself questions. Why am I such a piece of garbage? Why do I kind of resemble Janet Reno? It's a tough hand to be dealt, to be named Gus. It comes with a lot of adversity. You picked last for every sports team. I know this is probably an unfamiliar situation for anybody listening, but imagine being picked last in any kind of sports contest, and rather than your name being called out, you always just hear 
The words, damn it, muttered under the cool kid's breath. That happens like four or five times a week for Gus. Who's looking after Gus? You're wondering? Did he ever get adopted from the orphanage? The answer is no. The state wouldn't even take him into the correctional system. Even if Gus committed a crime, they wouldn't lock him up because he'd mess up the vibe in juvie in a really pronounced way. Gus joins the circus. That's the only place for someone named Gus. You know it. That resonates with you and your bones. Say, ah, well, yeah. Guess somebody's got to step up and be an elephant penis washer. May as well be Gus, right? Quick recap. Gus's parents, not okay. Gus gets put up in an orphanage and brings the energy level down. In a way that's like almost impressive, but it's just so negative that like, we can't give recognition for it. The nuns running this orphanage, who typically have bottomless wells of compassion that are untappable, a lot of the nuns start drinking. And like, what's the point? What's the point of any of this? Gus knows he's a bummer, so he joins the circus. We're still doing our recap. But he gets kicked out of the circus. This is actually a true story, by the way, about most kids named Gus. This is a pretty stereotypical life script. Plays out like this a little too often. Then what? After you've been rejected by a bunch of clowns and bearded ladies, where then? Naturally, you start working on power lines, smoking a lot of meth. That's what Gus does, obviously. And that brings us to a thoughtful conversation about infrastructure. It really does. That infrastructure bill that was passed by Congress a couple months ago, however long ago it was, boy, was there a lot of pork in that bill. Not a lot going to infrastructure. Not a lot going to Gus prevention programs. Can you imagine if that was just the solution to all of this? Is you just round up all the Gus's and you say, Guys, you are the squeaky wheel, collectively, that needs the grease. And that grease is, um, it's a sword. Infrastructure's failing in our country. Potholes everywhere. Power lines going down. Creating extreme fires. You can thank Gus for that. If you run into somebody named Gus, if you offhandedly just decide to take a shopping trip to Staples because that's where the vast majority of people named Gus work. And no knock on Staples, but they've made massive errors in their hiring by employing so many people named Gus. Talk about a recipe for disaster. What do we do with the United States, Gus? That's a question. And let's make a clarifying point here. I'm not talking about People named Augustus or Angus who shortened their name. Not Gustavo, not Gustav. I happened across a website, more of a support group than anything for people who have encountered the United States Gus. That really wrecks a day, doesn't it? Everything could be falling apart around you in the country, in your personal relationships. But then you happen across a guy named Gus. And boy, that's just a radioactive person. Nothing good comes from being around a Gus. So this website, I see a quote here. My son is named Gus, a little old soul, happy guy. All lies, obviously. Just like the others, total fabrication. Everyone comments on how cute his name is when they hear me say it. What a fib. What a fib. You know that's just some little monster named Gus who made a website and is trying to flip the script on everybody and say, oh, I'm not a bad dude. Yes, you are, Gus. 
Own up, man. Own the fuck up. You got to think before you name a child. I know I rip on people's names on the Darby cast quite a bit, and there's actually a pretty good reason for that. It's because some names just aren't okay. Not at all. They set people up for extreme failure. What is the highest achievement Gus could reach? Realistically. Human riot shield. I know that was probably on the tip of your tongue, and I robbed you of being able to shout it out. Some of you. Some of you may have beat me to the punch. There's a score of listeners right now who are wondering, did a guy named Gus, like, hurt one of your family members? Steal a girlfriend? Mess up your total while ringing you up at Staples? The answer to that is no. I don't know anybody named Gus. And I'm not too proud to index heavily on gratitude when it comes to that. If you know somebody named Gus, I need you to go up to him today. Put a hand on their shoulder and say, the jig's up, man. I know everything. It's over, man. The lies stop now, Gus. You call them on their bullshit. If you see something, say something. You say, Gus, when we first met, you mentioned that you went to community college and I actually just listened to a podcast that would lead me to believe that that's fucking bullshit. Okay, Gus. Let's go back to this website. This heavy, disgusting propaganda nightmare to yank a few more highly unrealistic quotes definitely authored by a mischievous and unethical guy named Gus. Here's one. Here's a quote. No matter who the Gus is in your life, everyone knows and loves a Gus. Talk about a lie that goes way out of bounds. Here's another quote from this site, obviously authored by a Machiavellian little weirdo named Gus. I am trying to convince my husband that this is the perfect, all caps, name for our firstborn. To all you Gusses out there, I love your name. Now you're going to try to tell me that that wasn't authored by a dangerous orphan? Gus has nowhere to call home, and I'm fine with it. And I think you should be too, if you aren't already uh, having a really good time. I think you need to relax a little bit and understand how honest of a take this is. There aren't a lot of podcasts that are going to get into the real meat and potatoes of the world. It's going to be chicks pounding daiquiris and talking about lewd sex acts. But if you want to know a thing or two about Gus and life, aren't you happy you're a fan of the Darby cast, right? Kyle, you actually know a guy named Gus? What's his profession? Sex offender? checks out. A lot of you right now are wondering, how do we course correct after so much unspoken damage has been levied upon our nation? You're going to hear the stories about inflation. You're going to hear some kind of explanation about how the conflict going on in Eastern Europe is a real mess, but you're not going to hear what's actually going on stateside. That's that there is a small army of complete menaces turning our whole country upside down. What do you do with them? I think we could all make a phone call or two to Staples Corporate and say, turn over their employment records, HR lady. This is above your pay grade. Some of you right now are saying, is this a witch hunt? And I'm going to tell you right now, it's not a witch hunt if the problem's super real. And Gus is a real problem. The United States Gus? Now let's zoom out for a second. It's not these guys' fault that they inherited a name fit for demons. Early intervention. 
I think is our only way to stop this needs to be a campaign where you send out a digital survey to all men and women in the entire country and ask them to rank order a list of 200 names. And if the name at the bottom of that list isn't Gus, unfortunately, these people will have to be executed or exiled, whatever. We just can't deal with it anymore. We're all really tired. Right now, there's probably a score of you listening to this that are just breaking down in tears and being like, nobody believed me when I told them my story. I knew an elephant penis washer. His name was Gus. And he was just such a vibe kill. Like, ugh, whoa. I didn't think anybody knew what it was really like. I'm here for you. If you're one of those people right now who's uncontrollably sobbing from having to carry the burden of interfacing with a guy named Gus more than once, which is something so terrible it would make the devil himself feel emotionally unregulated. Let me just tell you, I believe you. I believe you and your story. People don't make that up. Believe Gus victims. There is only one exception to everything that I've said. And that individual, his name is Gus Johnson, and he is a great sports announcer. Incredible. Against the odds, he became a good dude. I think he went to church pretty often. And I think his parents were just fine. We're all liable to make mistakes from time to time. Misnaming your child is a huge failure. But thank goodness for Gus Johnson. Go ahead, YouTube the guy. Listen to his voice. It's incredible. But he earned his place at the top. He had to go through a lot. Imagine just showing up anywhere, introducing yourself. And more often than not, the thing that you're getting back is a scowl and a knuckle sandwich. I would love to have Gus Johnson on the podcast so he could set the record straight and be like, yeah, I'm the only good one. I'm actually the only one that's okay. I've met other Gus's. I've been to Staples. Well, have you know, a lot of shit has gone uh, really wrong with the associates there named Gus. You got to be careful how you name your kids. But we all know that in the case of Gus, those parents are beyond saving. Because Gus doesn't happen in a vacuum. Comes from a life of immorality, theft, murder. Here's something I'd like to look up. What percentage of parents of children named Gus have criminal records? I would imagine it's dangerously close to 100%. These foul folks unleashing a blight of Gus upon us. Son of a bitch, right? Again, my bone to pick is not with Gustavo, Gustav, Angus, Augustus, August. You guys are all safe. And I know you're out there trying your best. But just G-U-S, I just got shivers up my spine spelling it out. Can't believe they have websites now that are pro-Gus. I don't like that. Don't like that one bit. Our dog, who is a beagle, is named Gus. He is a friendly dog at that. It's another quote from his website. That dog is a menace. That dog has killed people. And it's a pit bull. You know it and I know it. I named my son Gus and people smile when they hear it. I love it. Notice how this fake woman said, I love it. She's talking about Gus, the person, not the name. Otherwise, I would have said I love him. But a monster like Gus could never see that his writing was flawed and gave away too much. 
Let's keep looking at these manufactured propaganda statements on this website. When we tell people that our son's name is Gus, they always chuckle and say what a cute name it is. We agree. Now that's a guy named Gus writing that who's missing the social cues in a huge way. There's a difference between chuckling and laughing nervously in a state of panic. Let's continue. At my son's preschool back-to-school night, one child's parent sought us out as their son would talk about our Gus a lot. Probably a lot of confessions about getting uh, burned with a magnifying glass. The quote continues, Turns out Gus is pretty popular with his class. LOL. Guess the joke's on us, isn't it? These Gusses are laughing in our faces. They know how twisted they are. There's probably two listeners, maybe one, listening to this right now that is pretty offended by this, saying, I know somebody named Gus and they're okay. No, they're not. End of discussion. I've spent a lot of time describing a problem, but it's time to move into solution mode. Obviously, the only remedy for this is a series of high-profile exorcisms. When your parents sleep in graveyards and drown cats for sport, obviously we are talking about something that's uh, pretty spiritually perverse. The demon spawn that comes from an unholy alliance, uh, the likes of which those people are executing. Parents of children named Gus own at least two ceremonial daggers imbued with rage. Inscriptions made out of chaos. It's a big issue, okay? This is a really big issue. I've hinted that I've had a couple aces up my sleeve of big things that I was going to disclose to you, the listener. And this is one of them, okay? I've been keeping this under wraps, but I can't hold my tongue any longer. It needed to be said. All of it. If you have the skill set of a priest, whether you're a priest or not, so as long as you have skills of exorcism, let me point you in the direction of circus grounds, staples, and power lines you will inevitably find quite a few Gus. Gus can be plural, for sure. You will find many a Gus. You will find Gus aplenty. And then you know what needs to be done. You read them scripture. You tell them it's over, Gus. You stupid son of a bitch. This isn't your fault. And I'm going to leave you with a choice. Here is some paperwork to officially change your name. Otherwise, I'm going to have to drive this stake through your heart. Unfortunately, none of them are going to take the first option. Because they're going to be tweaked on meth and steeped in a lifetime of disappointment. And they've got nothing to lose. And that's a dangerous situation for any aspiring young exorcist. We can do this, okay? This is an uphill battle, obviously. But it's a battle worth fighting. Parents, Darbycast doctors who are parents, it would not be remotely inappropriate to demand that you see a list of all the kids' names at, just first names, at the schools that your children attend. If there's a single Gus on there, you pull them. You pull them quick. If they're on a sports team, if they're going to a summer camp, you go to the higher-ups and you say, I have a right to know. Let's wrap this one up on one of these poorly crafted PR statements on this website. My name is Gus. Everyone calls me Gus. I think that it's a pretty cool name. 
just stop with the bullshit. Okay, cut it. We've all been through a lot these past couple of years. Everybody's really had enough. Where do these people, these gusses, get the cojones, right? Where do they get the stones, the grapes, the eggs, the jewels, the huevos? Where do they get off? This nation is hurting. And the last thing we need is a surprise gus attack. Wolf in sheep's clothing dot com. Kyle, make the purchase. We're going to make it an anti-gus awareness site to combat this, whatever this site is. What's it called? Babies named Gus.com? Goodness gracious. I need to chill. I need to relax. This has got me really worked up. And I hope that you have a bit of a fire lit up under you as well. They were saying, if I know anybody who's thinking about naming their child Gus, I will hurt them. I will teach them a lesson. And if fists get thrown, so be it. But we can't have a nightmare child just waltzing around, leaving a wake of ash, chaos, and broken relationships and miscalculated totals at Staples in his rearview mirror. We can't have that. But that's going to do it for DarbyCast Wildcard Friday. You have a great weekend. Stay frosty. If anybody named Gus approaches you, Run.